Oh, oh, so Hellboy is now in theaters, and it is the remake of the 2004 film of the same name. Now, the 2004 film, of course, was directed by Guillermo del Toro, and that was a good film. I haven't seen the sequel to that, unfortunately, just yet. It's on my list. But And both films are based off of the graphic novel of the same name. Now, this Hellboy remake is directed by Neil Marshall. For those who don't know, he directed a couple episodes of Game of Thrones, particularly the Battle of Blackwater and the Battle at the Wall in Season 4. He is a really good TV show director. So I was actually very much so excited for this film because it was R-rated, first of all. And second of all, David Harbour is in the lead role. He was in movies such as like State of Play, The Equalizer, and of course the TV show Stranger Things. He's a good actor. I like him. And I felt like, yes, Ron Perlman was great, but I was looking forward to see how David Harbour was going to test this role out. And for the most part, he's good in this film. I think he is very good in this film. Ian McShane is also in the film. And that's the one thing I have to say. David Harbour is good. And the cast, they chose good cast members. Mila Djokovic is in this film. Ian McShane's in the film. But unfortunately, that's where the positives end. I mean, I started off this review pretending I was asleep as like a bad joke. But the truth of the matter is... This film did put me to sleep a couple times because for a film that is R-rated and does have the opportunity to have a lot of intense action with blood, very little action actually occurs on the film. It's actually kind of sad. Um, there are a lot of scenes of exposition and it's not like the interesting type of exposition, which, you know, obviously is the kind that you can digest. This is the type of this is the type of exposition that I always, and I'm saying always criticize. Example, the opening scene explains a lot of things. Um, it shows a lot of imagery and there's a voiceover. It's explaining everything. 10, 15 minutes later, literally all of that gets explained again by characters to the main character. And it's like, well, why did you even have that voiceover and imagery in the beginning? Why don't you just have them those characters explain it to the characters so that we as the audience are figuring it out as the characters figuring it out. Not, oh, we know it. And then as the characters getting told it again, it's like, oh, well, this is just boring because we already know all this information. So it's just bad filmmaking on that part. The editing is also atrocious. This is some of the worst editing I've seen in a film in quite some time. I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of scenes where there's just a barrage of edits and it just makes no sense with why these imagery is getting placed on screen in that particular fashion. And on top of that, how do you waste Ian McShane? Ian McShane is fantastic. He's such a great actor. I loved him in the TV show Deadwood, but in this film, he's so underutilized. It's not even funny. And the script is talking down to the audience. It's not just giving a lot of exposition. It's also telling the audience what they need to think during certain scenes. And it's also a tonal mess. Like, I can I can respect a movie like The Lone Ranger for being a tonal mess. But a film like this, it's just unacceptable because of the fact of the matter is, there's no actual artistic merit to it. It's just a film that you can tell the studio meddled with to no end. And it's unfortunately plain as day. Um, I also have to say that the villain is laughable. I mean, the whole movie is relying on this villain and the plan. It's the end of the world and everything. But it's it's such an anticlimactic final act when it, everything actually does tie up to everything that's been going on with this villain. It's just very anticlimactic. On top of that, there were glimmers of, and I'm saying like slight, slight glimmers of potential with this film. Mostly towards the end, but those glimmers happen a little bit too late. And again, I can't help but say this. You have a film that is R-rated and embraced it. You know, a lot of advertisement was saying, we're R-rated. You know, they had red band trailers and everything. But the film itself, I have to say, was kind of a soft R-rating. Yes, there was some language and yes, there was plenty of gore. But the action itself, some of it was actually like PG-13 shot, in my opinion. Um, towards the end, it did get R-rated, but at the same time, it was dull, you know, when you have characters that you don't really care about and a story that's also not bounced at all and action that's very uninteresting, 
you just get a film that is just dull. And I hate saying that word, but it's 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 true. So Hellboy as a whole, I hated it. I thought it was a terrible film from a story perspective, from acting. Well, acting was okay, but from story perspective, character perspective. And I also want to make a side note, visual effect wise. Um, these visual effects were from like 15 years ago, I would say. Um, I turned to my friend at one point and was like, wow, like I, I was not expecting the visual effects to be bad, like especially like this. Like some of them reminded me of the Scorpion King. Yeah, I know, right? That That's terrible. So visual effects were terrible. Um, makeup that was borderline terrible, sometimes passable. Acting that was okay, but just... Again, this is a film that you watch and you just can't help but be drained. I'm feeling drained right now. That's why I'm not my usual 100% self when giving reviews because I just feel drained after watching this movie. It's truly, I do. So please, if this is the first time that you guys have watched my reviews, don't judge your base on this. I'm just drained by this movie. That's why Hellboy for me personally, I'll be giving it a half a star out of five. Yeah. I don't recommend this at all, and it doesn't even get a hot sauce reading. It's it's atrocious. It's a film that I can see why it has the rating it does on Rotten Tomatoes. And I'm saying that as someone that went into it open-minded. I saw the rating, and I was like, eh, it doesn't mean anything. I liked Death Wish from last year. So, but, yeah, I, I agree with the rating for that, and that's why it's a bottom-of-the-barrel film for me. So, guys, Hellboy, did you like it, though? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below whether you liked it or not. If you did like it, I'm more than happy to hear you guys' thoughts on why you liked it. Also, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.